Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. Now they're gonna try and buy your treasured items off you for cash on the table today. 40 pounds, Anne. That won't buy my granddaughter a wedding dress. That's another way of saying you want more. If I don't think that's enough money that they offer, I'm gonna tell you, reject that and gamble and place the same goods into an auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Leeds in Yorkshire. There's a fantastic crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They've brought along their treasures. They are determined to do business. You know what they want. They want to walk away with the real deal. First up, we're with Debbie Serple. There'll be no horsing around at her table. David and auctioneer Rob Lee are watching with anticipation. Charlotte, thank you so much Hi. for coming on the show nice and bringing this beautiful rocking horse with you. Can you tell me a little bit about it? My grandma originally bought it in the 50s as a birthday present for my uncle. He had it until I was born 26 years ago, where they had it restored and was given to me when I was born. I'm presuming that in the 50s, when it was bought, it was bought as a new thing. It was new yeah. in the 50s. Yes. And do you remember her saying anything about it being an expensive thing when she bought it? Yes. Where I, I spoke to her last week, actually, because I, I knew I was coming here, and she said that in the 50s it was £50, pounds, which I believe was quite a lot of money, money in the 50s. I presume that these are your initials, Charlotte, They in the are, front. yes. They were put on there for me when I was small. Normally, the early ones will have a maker's mark on a plaque, either in this area where your initials now are, or down here. It seems such a shame that you're getting rid of it. I don't use it anymore. I've got no room in my house. It lives at my mum's house at the moment. And you won't have any regrets later in life when you have little ones? No, I don't think so. Whenever I see one of these brought on the show, you know, Rob, it brings a smile to my face. But what do you think about it as an object itself, Rob? I think it's a lovely object and could do decent money. I feel the same. You know, the independent value has placed a, a, an estimation on this at 150 to 200 pounds. Where are you going to place your estimate? Well, I'd have said 250 to 350. Well, I think that's a fair estimation. That's got to be worth 300 quid of anybody's money. Let's see what our dealer Debbie puts on the saddle. Let's see if she can tempt our seller. So, we'll start with an offer. So that's 150 pounds. How do you feel about that, Charlotte? I was hoping for more, really. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. 200. What do you feel about that? I think I would like a bit more, really. Um, it's, it's been in the family for a long time. It is quite a special toy. Right, let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers and what I think about this. Now, there are various valuations here, Debbie. 150 to 200 pounds, that's the lowest. And that comes within the structure of your 200. Then there's a 250 to 300. I'm going to say 200 pounds is a reasonable offer. I'd really like to see 300 quid down there because I feel, Debbie, you will always find a mother with a child that will give a profit on 300 pounds. Can you imagine at times of festivity and you're going out to buy a child a present? She wouldn't get away with under 500 quid for something as beautiful and attractive as that. I don't disagree with any of the issues that David's discussed at all. So I will make you one more offer. I'm going to put 20 more down, so that's £220. What do you feel about that, Charlotte? Thank you, but I think I prefer to take it to an auction, really. I, I said that that's probably the best course of action. Good luck. Thank you very Good much. David and Charlotte are of the same opinion. Auction is best. Let's see if they're right. 
Now, on the dealer's day, Debbie offered you £220. I didn't think that was enough, and so we advise you to turn that down. It's here in the sale room. They're not always easy to sell, but I'm convinced it's worth more than that. Let's see what happens. Fourth to start the bidding at £200. Anybody for £210? 210 £220, 230 230 on the internet. 240 250 pound bid with the internet. Hammer's dropping at 250. 250 on the internet. I have to say to you, I'm a bit disappointed because I expected more and I hoped for more. We've got to take away the commission and that's going to leave you with about 212 pounds. Right. Now, 220 pounds you've turned down. So I'm going to have to say, Debbie, our dealer at 220 pounds, she had the real deal. She did. But I still believe that horse was worth a few more quid, but that's the way it goes when you gamble. So the Duke thinks they're being a bit stingy in the auction room. Charlotte seems happy enough, though, and the horse is rocking off to a new home. We're with James Late next, and he has a royal presence at his table. Hello, Anne, I'm James. Hello, James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, What too. have you brought along? A whole lot of old paper. There are four tickets and a programme from when Queen Victoria and Prince Albert opened Leeds Town Hall. And Prince Albert. I have a feeling he might have been dead by then, but I may be wrong. Well, he may have been. Her Majesty, military escort. Oh, you're quite right. Look, Her Most Gracious Majesty, accompanied by His Royal Highness, the Prince Consort. And so he was there. Was right. And Princess Alice and Helen. Anyway, why, why have you got them? Well, I found them. Just lying around? No, no, no. I found them in a, a bureau when my mother died. Any idea what, what they're worth? Mm, no, not really. No, no, I haven't either. Ah, well. So we're, we're both working from the same, uh, the same book. Song sheet. Yeah. I'll put some money on the table, see how we go. I think I'd like to offer you 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds, Anne. That won't buy my granddaughter a wedding dress. That's another way of saying you want more. 50, 60 pounds, which still won't buy your granddaughter a wedding dress. No. So that's a no again, is it? So I'll put one more tenner down, Anne. That's 70 pounds, which is about where I see them, to be honest. Well. Well, you've heard what James says. That's where he says them. Let me tell you where I see them. The independent values in the auctioneers have said 40 to 60. I would advise you that what is on there is a fair and good offer. I would take that, but you still have the chance to gamble, should you wish, and it's your decision. Thank you. Well, there. So, £70, pounds, I know it's not going to buy your granddaughter a wedding dress, but that's... It a, may buy a, a headdress. A headdress, yeah, yeah, or a nice bottle of champagne. True. So, there we are. We, have we got a deal? We have a deal, Excellent. James. Well, thank you very much. I hope the thank wedding goes really much. well. Thank you. <laughs> We all know Michael Hobden loves a bit of gold. This next lot should be right up his street. Doreen, you bought in a little bit of gold? I have, yes. Where's it from? Uh, all different places. That was my ninth birthday present. Uh, that from a cousin, I think. That was Ron's mum's on a, a locket. Yeah. And this one was, I don't know, Probably my mum's had not Just a little present of some sort. So it's family yes. gold? Yes, it is. Yes. And you've been watching all the prices and it's going up all the time? And, yes, yes. And there again it goes down, down. and up and down, mm, doesn't it? Mm. Doreen, I've had a quick look at these. They're all Hallmark 9 karat gold, which is yes. what we look for when we're buying. Mm. And we've weighed it and so we know roughly what it's worth, but at the end of the day it's uh, not going to be scrapped this lot. I think I'll just... Maybe try and retail it again. Oh, I hope you do. Yeah, well, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's mm. got a bit of age to it. And it's got character to it, the older stuff, and it's not yes. like the modern stuff. No. So I'll make you an offer based on prices what we are at today. Right. So what about 50, 100, 50, 200, 50, 300, 350. Leaves a little profit for me. That's very good, but could you put a bit more down, please? Yeah. What would you be happy with? Another 50. Another 50 is right up there to the limit, you know that, didn't you? 
I think the scrap price on this is just about that, but you know what I mean? I don't care. It's only money, and it's a nice bit of gold. Right. £400. Are That's we happy lovely. now? That's lovely, yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. Nice little deal. I won't be scrapping that one. No. I'll try and sell them on. Mm. Yeah, they are nice. Yeah, I think they're nice. In fact, I think I might change my mind. No, you can't now. <laughs> Deal's done. Deal's done. Now, has Helen met her match in Edmund? Nowhere near. Nowhere near? I'm going We're to have not. to go millions, am I? You'll have to dig a lot deeper. A lot deeper? Mm -hmm. Find out what all the fuss is about after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds. We're with Helen Gardner, who's been dealt a sporting hand, but will it be a winning deal? Edmund, you've brought in some ephemera uh, today for that's me. That's right, some rugby uh, cigarette cards. Cigarette cards. <clears throat> You're going to have to tell me everything I need to know. The Baines's cards, depicting various uh, clubs yep. throughout the country. And uh, there's uh, a collection of 31 altogether. And, and where did you uh, get them? Where did you get them, Eddie? <clears throat> well, they came from my partner's uh, family. I see. And being passed down through the family. And do you like them? I like them a lot, yeah. You like them a lot? Why are you selling them? Because, like everybody else, we've got to declutter and, <laughs> and we've, got, we've got to raise some money for uh, uh, our dog. You're going to sell these interesting cards for your dog. What's wrong with your dog? Why are, why are you...? She's an elderly dog. Oh. And she uh, liver's collapsed. Oh no! Yeah. Can they fix her up for a few more years? Yeah, they, they have done. They have. They have so done. Far, she's all What's right. her name? Skelly. Named oh. after the Skelly guy. Oh, Skelly. Yeah. Well, anyway, let me put Go. down some money to help Skelly. Yeah, sure. But I'm not sure what they're worth. Maybe you'd do better in auction. Let's see. Fifty pounds. A hundred pounds for your collection. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. I'm going Fair to have enough. to go millions, am I? You'll have to dig a lot deeper. A lot deeper? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, um, maybe I better not dig deeper. Maybe you should go to auction. I don't know. £150. I'm deeper. £150. I tell you what, £170. How's that? Nowhere near. So you're not going to take my money? You're going to go to auction, are you? Not, not at that, no. Well, I'll make it a little bit more difficult for you. £190. That's not making it much more difficult. No? Um, if I take that away and make it 200. And? No, I'm going to stop at 200. And I do hope that they're worth a lot more for your sake, if you're not going to take that. But I really don't know just how much they're worth. And that's as far as I'm prepared to gamble. What yeah. are you going to do? I'll go to auction. You're going to take them to auction? We'll do, yeah. Well, I hope you make a lot of money with them. You've been to auction before. I oh, have, yes. Yeah, so you know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a nice Enjoy day out with David. Yeah. yeah. And some of these are local, are they? They are, yes. Well, let's hope they do really well. Okay. For your sake and the dog's sake, okay, for Skelly's sake. Much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I Thank hope you. they do well. Thank you. Edmund's determined that the auction is the place to be. Over to you, David. Now, Edmund, on the dealer's day, you brought along a collection of 31 Baines cards. You sat down with Helen Gardner. Helen Gardner said 200 quid. You said, fancy a bit of a kick round the sale room? I'm going to gamble on those. They're coming up now. The reserve is 200 on a two to 300 pound estimate. Are they going to sell? Mm -hmm. They're about the money. Let's find out. Forced to start the bidding at £130, 140 I'm after, 140, 150, 160, 160, 170, 180 I'm after, 180 bid, 190 it's got to be now, 190, 200, 200 I'm out, 210, 220 please, 220 bid on the internet, must be 230 elsewhere, 240 please, 240 bid on the internet, 260 I'm after, 270 I'm after, 280 I'm after, 290 I'm after, 300 please, 320 I'm after, it's at 300. Oh, that's good, great. They won them. 340 bids so far. 380, please. 400, please. 400 pound bid with the netters. 440, I'm after, it's 420 bid. Anybody for 440? Oh, moving on. 460, please. 440 bid. Hammer's going to drop at 440 pound. Have we done? Yes, excellent. excellent. 440 pounds. Now we've got mm -hmm. some commission. I make that about 375 quid or close to it. What's your reaction to that? Highly delighted. Highly delighted. 200 you turned down from Helen Gardner. You did the right thing. 
The internet wanted them. They made 440 quid. Lovely. Take away the commission, you're going home with <laughs> 374 pounds. That was the real deal. That was a score. We're back with Debbie Serple, whose eyes have really lit up. Jennifer, thank you so much for coming today. Um, tell me a little bit about this jug. It belongs to my friend, actually, and it belonged to a lady who Maureen's mum looked after years ago, and she, the old lady passed it on to her mum, and then Maureen's mum died, so it's passed on to her. It's very, very pretty. It's got these acanthus leaf feet, and there are four little feet on the bottom, and I love that, that the leaf comes up over the bowl of the jug and then curls to make the foot. And then underneath, it has a very, very strong, good hallmark. It has a London date, and I believe it's 1859, so right. it's quite an early little jug. Uh, the other thing that's nice inside is it's been gilded. Did you notice there's a different colour right, yes, inside? Yes, yes. Um, so it's been plated inside to prevent it from being marked. I've weighed it, and in the current market, silver is, is at, I was going to say an all-time high, it started to slide a wee bit, but it's a good time to be selling silver because mm. it just in terms of its... Uh, weight alone, it's worth something. Right. Um, so I know from having weighed it um, that it's worth about fifty pounds in scrap. So right. that's where I'm thinking. I'm not going to to play silly games. So the first thing I'm going to do is put that amount on the table and see okay. what how your expression is. <laughs> Twenty. Forty. Fifty pounds. How do you think about that? Uh, we were expecting a little bit more than that. Okay. I agree with you. I think it's worth more than its scrap value. Right. Um, I'm being very honest with you in that sense, and I will always tell people if something is worn or tired um, or doesn't have its quality that it becomes scrap in my mind. But this doesn't fall into that ballpark. Yeah. So what I'll do then is I will take the ten away and replace it with a 20. Now, bearing in mind, you've got 15% seller's premium to take into account if it does go to auction. I, I thought with you saying it's worth 50 pound a scrap, that it must be worth a bit more a than that for, for um, not so scrap. So if I, if I put another 10 pounds down, how would you feel about that? Well, I feel better about it. Yeah, yes. well, let's have a go. So there we are. You couldn't put another five on there. So another five and it's five mine. Pound and you can, I'll, yeah, sure. Sure? You yes. Super. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Debbie kept the jug from going to auction, but has she paid too much? Find out later. Next up, Michael's table is laden with that famous Stoke-on-Trent china. But is it quantity over quality? Mark, thank you for coming in today with your little collection of Wedgwood basalt. Tell me what you know about it. I just know that the scenes of love. I acquired them from a, an old, three of them from an old woman that I, I knew, and she, when she passed away, if, if I if I got the question right on what the scenes were, she said she'd leave me them. Really? Yeah. And uh, the rest of them I've just collected from back street shops and charity shops, really. So, how old were you when you started collecting them? Wedgwood all in all, about 16. Really? So I'm 29 now. I just want to go for it. There's 13 items, and one of them's got a little bit of a damage on. This is, that's yeah. this one, isn't it? Apart from that, it's all unglazed. So, shall I get my money out? Yep. Yeah. I'll go 10. 15 pounds. That's like about one pound fifty each, which is, to be honest with you, you see them in charity shops for that, didn't you? No, <laughs> not even <laughs> in for that price. All oh, right then, look, I'll put another five in. That's twenty pounds, Mark. That's generous, David. Is he playing with you, Mark? I think he is a bit, yeah. What's it really worth? Not easy to sell, not commercial. That's the sad news. Thirty to fifty pounds. There's still thirteen pieces there. It probably is worth a mid estimate, I would have thought. 
what you've got to do is you've got to look across and look him in the eyes. He he plays poker quite a lot. He'll try and tell you, no, nah, it's no good. It's all so, damaged, isn't it? It's all damaged. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, if you got in a sale room, 30, 35 quid, you'd have to take a fiver off or something. I reckon 30 quid would be a decent price to take home. All you've got to do, Mike, is put another tenner in. I don't really want to go another tenner, Mark, but what would you be happy with today, be honest? 36. <laughs> 36 and six pound foot commission and 30 quid for me to take home. Meet me halfway, Mark, and let me make a profit. Meet me at 25 quid. 26. 26? Six pound commission. <laughs> 26 pounds it is then. I haven't got a coin, but I will get you one. All right. Thanks, Mark. What's this? A mystery item has landed on James's table. There can only be one or two things that fit in a little box like this. It's either a wonderful scientific instrument or it's a fruit knife. But which is it? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Yorkshire. The antiques and collectibles are pouring into the dealer's den. Sisters are doing it for themselves over on Helen's table. Philip? Yeah. I'm Helen, pleased to know. meet you. Yeah. And you've brought along a little sister, yeah, have you? Yeah, that's right. So what can you tell me about this little Not an awful lot, actually. I inherited it when Mum and Dad died, you know. And do you like it? I like it, yeah. yeah. It's like everything now, it's... Uh, got put up in the bedroom, away from I everything, see. you know. So why are you selling it, Philip? Well, we're getting rid of all sorts of bits and pieces. You're now. downsizing yeah. a bit, or are you just getting... Well, we're just getting... The, need to clear room clearing out. Clearing the decks. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And this is going... This little sister is going to have to go. Well, we're a cabinet full, but we've all got chips on and things, you say, oh. so... Got the best stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's rather nice. Do you know anything about her? Don't, know. You don't know who made it? No. Or what it is? Well, I know it's a nun. Well, she's quite interesting because when you turn it upside down, it's quite hollow. Yeah. And it's been made by Worcester, which is one of the best porcelain makers in Britain. And I think it's about 1900 or yeah. 1920s, maybe. 20th century, I would say. And it may have been made as a candle snuffer, which is a bit, little bit bizarre, really. Yeah. You know, the nun is snuffing out the candle. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure, but I do think that's what it would have been used for, yeah. as a candle snuffer. Now, she's had a little chip here and been coloured in, yeah. so somebody's done a little bit of restoration on That'll it. That'll be mother. You think that yeah. would have been your mother? Yeah. Oh, she yeah. restored yeah. it a little yeah. bit. It's quite a quirky little thing. Mm. You really want to sell it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You want my money? <laughs> much as possible. Oh, well, I don't know how much I want to pay for it. I'll have to think about that. But I put some money on the table. Right. Won't be an awful lot, because I'm thinking about the little chip. Yeah. It is a little bit damaged. £20. How's £20 for your little ah, sister? It's worth more than that. Worth more than that? I think so, yeah. Maybe another another 20 Yeah. £40 for your little nun. A little bit more? I'm not sure if I want to pay much more, because she is a little damaged and she's not desperately old. It's just a quirky little thing. Since she asked me nicely, I'll put another fiver down. There we go. There's another five pound note. Yeah, yeah. The choice is that. yours. Mm. You're going to take it? Yeah. We're going to have a deal? Yeah. You're selling me your little sister? <laughs> well okay. done, Philip. Thanks. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks for bringing her in. No time to lose, it's straight over to Debbie. She has three items on her table, but will this colourful trio brighten her day? Jonathan. Hello. Thanks very much for coming on All the right. show. Pleased to meet you. I see you've brought these incredibly colourful pieces of pottery with you. Yes, yes. Can you tell me a little bit about them at all? Basically, we, we bought our flat. The lady who lived there had uh, died um, and when we moved into the flat, basically, they'd left everything. And the person who sold the flat to us told us to get rid of everything and paid us to get everything removed. Um, so these form part of the contents of the house when you moved, yeah, moved in? Yeah, yeah. Has anyone told you anything about these items? Um, I've just... I did a bit of research myself yeah. and found it's... Uh, like, the emblem's a group of 
a community of wine drinkers, I think, in France. Well, there's certainly a lot of clues on here to tell you that it's wine-related. I mean, obviously, the grapes yeah. here. You can see the, the vine that goes all the way around the outside, which is amazing, and the colours are amazing. What I've done is I've had a look on the back. Have yeah. you you've seen? Yeah. Should we turn it over yeah. and have a look together? On the back of the plate, it says Décoré à la main, which is decorated by hand, and it's made in Longwy in France. And made in France is clearly indicated yeah. there. That immediately tells me it's a 20th century piece, so it's not that old. Yeah. Um, anything which has made in dictates that it's a 20th century or, or even later now today. They are beautifully, beautifully coloured, but in my view they're not worth a huge amount of money, although they're very decorative and quite yeah. a dramatic thing. So what I'm going to do is make you an offer okay. and see how we go. 20. pounds for the charger, Jonathan. Uh, thinking a bit, a bit more. I'm, I'm seriously not going to go very much higher. Yeah, okay. And it might well be that you would do better with a dramatic piece like this at auction. So I, I will make you one more offer. Here's Just David. before you make that offer, let me give you some indication of where the independent valuers and the auctioneer. They are saying 150 to 200 pounds. At the moment, what we have on there is a very low offer. We need to see quite a bit more. If not, we're going to gamble, I think, and go to auction. OK. okay. Right. 60. 70 pounds. Have you ever been to auction uh, No, no. Because I agree with David, it may well be a place that will see its level at auction. What do you want to do? I'll take it to auction. You'll take it to auction. Yes. Best yes. of luck. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. On the dealer's day, you brought along some rather unusual decorative pottery, yeah. and that was uh, Longwy. You came along on the dealer's day and you sat down with Debbie, one of our dealers, and she said, I will give you £70. Mm -hmm. How attractive did that sound? Uh, it did. It sounded attractive. It'd be 100% profit, but uh, I thought it could, could get okay. a bit more. Well, you've heard what Jonathan says. They're here now. It would have produced 100% profit, but he thought, no, I think I can get more by gambling at the auction. The question is, are you right? We're about to find out now. Must start the bin at 65 pound. 70 it needs to be. 70 pounds, 70 pounds, 75, 80. It's at 80, it's 85. Good call, good decision. 90, looking for 95 now. 95, 100, sir. 100 pound, young man's in, in the room. It's at 100. All the now we at 100 pounds. One last look. A hundred pounds. I make that after the deduction of commission, 85 pounds. 70 pounds you turned down from Debbie. Going home with a real deal of 85 pounds. Happy? Yes. He's happy, I'm happy. Real deal, we're all happy. Small and mysterious, what is that on James Late's table? Hello, Andrea. Hello. Very nice to meet you. And you? No. There can only be one or two things that fit in a little box like this. It's either a wonderful scientific instrument or it's a fruit knife. It's a fruit knife. Oh, no. <laughs> I wish it had been a wonderful scientific instrument. So okay. do I, but... So this is a nice little mother-of-pearl silver fruit knife. Now, is it a family heirloom? And is your name Alice? It's not. It's Andrea. It's Who was Andrea. Alice? I'm not entirely sure. This was my father-in-law's. Right. And he did have two sisters, I think, before I met him. Yeah. Whether any of them were called Alice, I don't know. So your father-in-law's sister's probably not quite old enough. Possibly because not. Because the date but... on this is Sheffield 1861. So it's going to be your father-in-law's grandparents or even great-grandparents. Yeah. Isn't it? So you don't use it by the look of it. It hasn't, nope. hasn't been cleaned very much nope. recently. And it's also slightly bent. Have you noticed that? <laughs> 
I'd not noticed Someone that, to be honest. Someone obviously was trying to cut into a rock-hard grapefruit or something. Could have been. Yeah. The mother of pearl is not cracked, which is, which is a, a, a thing in its favour. Um, and the fact that it's got Alice engraved on it doesn't really matter very yeah. much. It's a kind of nice Victorian name, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And this is its original little papier-mâché or cardboard box. Yeah. Covered in paper to simulate shark skin or something yeah. like that. So, a bit of money on the table. It's not worth, not, not worth a fortune. True. But we'll see what we can do. I'd like to offer you 10, 20, 30 pounds for it. One more? Not one of those. A blue one would do nicely. I've got a little, one of these little chaps in here. So 35, that would be as much as I want to give for it. That's fine. You're happy with I'm that? I'm happy you're with You're so that, yes. easy. You. You're so easy to deal with. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much for bringing us along. Coming up, things get heated in the dealer's den. Would 20 swing it? We're getting warm. Right, 20 it is then. 20, have we got a deal now? No. But who will come out on top? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We're in Leeds today. Michael is joined by Craig, who fancies himself as a bit of a gold connoisseur. So, a bit of uh, scrap gold and... Well, you say that, but they're nice pieces. I'm, I'm all for it. I think gold and jewellery is getting scrapped too often. I much agree. too often. Yeah. And uh, what you've got... Tell me what you've got, because you know your gold. Well, uh, I've got a half sovereign, a uh, fairly plain shank. Um, it's quite a nice ring. Quite, quite wearable. Yep. A little bit too ostentatious for me. And then a reproduction sort of graduated Albert. Yeah, an yeah. Albert chain. Uh, and then we've weighed it, haven't we? You have. Well, weight-wise, I think you've got a in the half sovereign. You've got uh, four grams in the coin, yep. and then about seven grams in the shank. Spot on. In the bracelet, I'm not too sure because with the uh, with the pendant yeah. on. This came in at just under 24 grams. Yes. So I think we've allowed sort of just over a gram for that little bit of stone or whatever. It could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. Yes. I would think, you know, yeah. two grams is a fair estimate. So look, let me get some money out. This is cold, hard-earned dealer money. So okay. you, you decide if you want to take it or not, right? So I've got a price in mind where I've got to make a small profit. I'm yes. not, you know, I'm not the scrapper. So I'm going to go 50, 100. 50, 200, 50, 300, 50, 400. So, Craig, I'll be honest with you, that is my top offer, and it allows me a little profit. And we all need a little profit, David, don't we? We all need a bit of profit. Yeah. How much is on there? 400 pounds. OK. Four to 500 is the estimate from the independents and the auctioneer. The scrap value, should we use that word, would be 450. I'm going to say this, Michael, that's too good to scrap. I agree. That's a commercial item. That's a great-looking chain with a good-looking fob on it, and that is a commercially viable article. Leaving you with this, 450 is probably what it's worth. Thank you, David. How much more would you want from me today to do a deal? Put another one of those there, and I gave you a tenner back for luck. No, I'm sticking at 400. I'm sticking at 400. Push it, a right. little, push it a little bit more. No, I'll tell you why, because I want to make a few quid out of it. You can Would push a it ten a up swing it? No. Would 20 swing it? We're getting warm. Right, 20 it is then. 420, have we got a deal now? No. Craig, you're a hard man, and I'm not going to pay that extra tenner. That's a I'm shame. I'm digging my heels in, honestly. That's a shame. I've, I've, 420 is my price. That's a good price, but it's yes. not good enough. No. Auction it is. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're hard. <laughs> now, Craig, on the dealer's day, you brought along, I think, a very, very nice quality item. A nine carat gold curb link, an Albert chain. Yes. With a lobster clasp on it and a suspending T bar. And it's had a George V sovereign. Sorry, a half sovereign. And that was loosely set in a mount, probably a nine carat gold mount. Yes, yeah. On the dealer's day, you sat down with Michael Hogburn. Um, now, he offered you £420. Yes. 
I thought that was not a bad offer. What did you think about it? I, th I think I asked him at the time, if you put another £10 down, we would have had a deal on the day, and um, I'd have been happy with that. Michael, what were you thinking about? You should have got another tenner down. OK, at 4.20, it was close. Where are they going to be? Let's find out. The bidding has started at £400. We're going slow here. 4 10 I'm after. 4 10 4 20 4 30 4 40 with me. 4 50 it must be to move on. 4 50 on my left. 4 50. It's too good to put in the melting pot, this, you know. Anybody else for 4 60? We're going on, it's going to go. Hammer's going to drop at 4 50. The gavel went down at 450 pounds. Now, there is the commission to take off. And the time we take away the 15% commission is about £382. On the day, it made more in the sale room, but with the commission deducted, 382 Now, what have you got to say, Craig? Hoggies was the best. It was the real deal. See that, Hoggy? You want the real deal? Well, for once, anyway. OK, on the day, the real deal was with my mate, Michael Hogburn, at £420. Good on you, Hoggy. Well done, Mr Hogburn. Now it's time to see how our dealers have done overall. Well, it's rather nice. It's quite a quirky little thing. Mm. Helen Gardner made a small profit on the porcelain candle snuffer when it was sold to another dealer for £50. It's very, very pretty. Debbie Serple found a new home for the silver milk jug and made a neat little profit at the same time. There can only be one or two things that fit in a little box like this. It's a fruit knife. Oh, no. <laughs> the fruit knife James bought for £35 was passed on through the trade, making him a profit of £5. As for the four Thanks admission tickets and programme for the royal visit to Leeds Hall, James sold them on to a collector for a grand £100. It's a lot of money. Meet me halfway, Mark, and let me make a profit. Michael Hogman has parted with the Wedgwood collection and made a tidy sum in return. And the assortment of gold was sold as separate pieces for a healthy £500, making Michael our deal of the day. We've had a great day here in Leeds. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what we like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you!